Uh, one second. Okay. And I suggest we start with a little poll. I will launch right now. So please make your choice. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. I like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, three, two to go, one. Okay, well, um, there is someone uh, not ready to answer the question, one person. But anyway, I see most of you. Uh, okay, now everyone. Yes, so all of above, uh, I can share results with you. So you can see uh, one was too quick to answer, providing error correction, but I guess it's uh, one of actually ways we give feedback to our students. So um, now I'm going to share with you my presentation and we'll start talking. So uh, as I told you already, we're going to talk about feedback. We'll talk about online and offline feedback today. So what is feedback? Feedback is uh, basically uh, information that a teacher gives to learners on how well they are doing to help the learner improve specific points. Basically, it is any response regarding a student's performance or behavior. Feedback can be immediate it, during an activity or delayed. It can be given at the end of an activity or part of a learning program. Uh, also, it can take various forms. It can be verbal, written, or even gestural. It also can be given individual, in pairs, or in groups. Whatever we uh, have uh, as a feedback, we have to remember that the purpose of it is uh, to improve our students' performance. So now, now let's see how we need it, why we need it. So why is it so important? Providing feedback doesn't only mean giving students an explanation of what they are doing correctly or incorrectly. Through feedback, teachers can provide the students with suggestions for development, some learning strategies, and of course, correction of errors. Uh, getting the right feedback helps students stay engaged and sustain motivation. It can improve students' confidence, self-awareness, and enthusiasm for learning. Effective feedback um, has a certain aim, and this aim is to reduce the gap between current understanding of performance and a goal. It must basically provide useful answers to these three questions. The first one is, where am I going? So what is my goal? Goals promote self-directive action, a general ability we want students to develop. Feedback gives them information by which they can set reasonable goals and track their achievements of them. So they can adjust effort, direction, and strategy as needed. The second question is, how am I doing? So this involves feedback on progress. Uh, how the student is doing in comparison with the expected standard, either overall or part of the performance. And the third question is where to next? The thing to avoid here is more of the same. It is better if next steps involve enhanced challenges, more development of students' ability to provide self-feedback, uh, self um, some additional or better strategies or processes in working on tasks, some deeper understanding, and probably more information about what is understood and not understood. So here, um, at this point, you can think of it as feed forward rather than feedback. Now, uh, let's see how, uh, how we do that. I'm going to show you uh, seven utterances from a classroom. 
So what can you hear? What can you say actually in your classroom? You can say, okay, that was great. Well done, everyone. Right, so what he did decide to? Uh, how many interviews did John have? Well, that was good, but I heard these. Then you can write some sentences on the board. Uh, can you work in pairs and decide which ones are correct and which ones aren't? Let's do it uh, one more time. This time I want you to use some of the sentences on the board. Um, all right, Kate, what have you got for number one? I like going swimming, Dasha, not that I like go to swim. So Alex, what about number five? Do you agree that people should live together before they get married? So all of these can happen, might have happened uh, in your classroom. Now, for each of these, uh, we have some reasons to say. For the first one, for example, it's uh, giving praise. So saying, well done, everyone, ever since great, you give praise to your students. For the second, uh, it's eliciting outcomes of the task. So basically it's you're just reading or listening. Then uh, correcting errors. Here we have delayed feedback when you write sentences on the board and then students discuss them. Further practice when you move from one task to another or you repeat something if we speak about uh, drilling. Um, checking answers. Correcting errors, if we speak about instant feedback, and eliciting ideas or opinions from the task. Here's uh, the one about personal response. So, uh, thus, we came up to three basic types of feedback. The first one is a performance feedback. Uh, this one is about giving praise or uh, about future practice. The next one is the content feedback. Uh, here we elicit outcomes of the tasks and we also elicit ideas or opinions of our students from the task. And the third one, which is uh, uh, one of the most important as for me, is the language feedback. Here we check the answers and uh, correct errors, both instant and delete. Now, let's see how using um, which techniques we can implement each of these types in our lessons. Let's start with uh, a performance feedback. And here I would like you to participate a little bit and I would like you to text your ideas in the chat. So the first things that come to your mind, the things you do, uh, how you give or what you can do given a performance feedback. Mm hmm okay. Mm hmm Okay. Yes, exactly, great. So you can give praise in words. You can say, good job, great job. You can say, I've heard a lot of awesome ideas. Uh, thanks for sharing, for telling. Great, everything is, is wonderful. Uh, you can move to the next practice, to the next task. These are our bridges. So you're saying something like, well done, everyone. So basically it's the combination of the first and the second. And then we are moving to the next. Uh, you can give stickers, you can give candy. So yeah, it can be something physical if you do it in class. Uh, also, sometimes... Um, uh, I do applause. We sometimes, if we are speaking about uh, some projects or presenting works or, um, I don't know, some sort of little public speaking in our class, sometimes my students, they clap to each other, applauding because the works are really, really good. Okay, uh, content feedback. Uh, again, your ideas first.
Mm-hmm. Great. All right. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. So yeah, you ask basically these just questions and how you can do that. First of all, you can do the open class. So uh, for example, your students read the text and then you ask them the question, um, something like what did they decide or whose opinion do you agree with or what was it? Uh, did they like it? Yeah, some very general questions. Um, now, you can nominate individual students to answer for the questions. Uh, how do you know who to nominate? Right, please, in the chat. How do you choose who of your students to nominate if you want to nominate uh, an individual student? <laughs> That's perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, great. So you monitor, which is very important. So <laughs> who wants? Okay, why not? Shy guys. Mm -hmm. Yes. So monitoring gives you the information about your students. And uh, then you see if you are not having a lot of time for everyone to talk. So you choose the uh, stronger students if the question is difficult. You can choose some weaker students if the questions are easier. And thus, you can choose some people who are shy to talk usually. Yes, it's good also to choose different people at the time. Also here, you can choose someone who you know has the answer and who will give you the clear, short answer to the question. Mm -hmm. Yes, take notes. Mm -hmm. Has already been, okay. All right, well, well, nice. Have a list to Mark who has already been asked. Yeah, so it's very important when nominating individual students, basically to avoid um, asking the student who will drag it on for, for, I don't know, for 20 minutes, answering to one simple question, what was it, or whether uh, he liked it or something like that. So basic, better to avoid asking such students if like the answer must be just, you know, like three, four words. And monitoring always will help you with that. Now, you can uh, have a peer or group check. So here you ask your students to check to compare their answers in groups or in small pairs, well, small groups or pairs. Uh, you can reveal the answers on handouts, on the board, on the screen, uh, so they can find it. It can be on stickers, on the walls, everywhere. Uh, you can ask your students to nominate each other. This uh, can be a bit fun sometimes. And uh, well, um, well, it, it has its benefits too. It's fun and students are all involved in this. And uh, you can listen to a recording with the answer or watch a video with the answer here. And uh, one of my favorites is voting. So you can vote for the best answer. You can vote for, um, for everything. Even taking all of those questions you texted me in chat, like whether he liked it, you can raise your hands who think he liked it or he didn't, or uh, whose opinion you support, whose opinion do you agree, raise your hand, so anything like that. And we come to uh, the last but not least, the language feedback. Uh, here we have two big parts. We have checking the answers and we have error correction. So we'll start with checking the answers. Here, it actually is very similar to the previous one. So you can do it in pairs uh, or in groups. Here, students can compare the answers together before, check it, before pressing the check button. Sometimes you can ask them to simply uh, press the check button on the platform. Uh, you can write answers on the board. This one is also a very good one if you have some past finishers. So you can ask one of the students to come to the board to write the answers. If it's especially like uh, 1C, 2A, 3B, something like that. 
you can show the answers on the screen, on the board, uh, on the hand uh, handouts. You can nominate students uh, to answer. Students can nominate each other. Uh, they can listen to the recording with the answer. You can get one student to read the answers and the rest of the class see if they agree with it. And again, uh, you can give some handouts with the answers. Now, uh, my favorite one, error correction. Your ideas, guys. Delete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Yes. <laughs> Mm hmm screenshots okay yeah all ideas are great yes uh, i'll adapt some of mine ideas so you can refer to a correct model uh, for example uh, the very i have two uh, actual examples here the very favorite uh, mistakes of all teachers uh, depend from and hotel so here, basically, what you can do, you can just give the uh, the right model. You can refer to the correct model, saying like it depends on or hotel. So just give the right, the correct model. You can state a problem area. You can say pronunciation, tense, article, now, future, past. For example, your students say hotel, and you say pronunciation. And then students already start thinking themselves. They start like, okay, I have a problem. Yes, I'm not agree. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, and your students start, okay, so the problem is with pronunciation. There must be another stress hotel. Or they say, I go to the cinema yesterday. And you say tense or you say past. And then they check themselves already and correct themselves. Now, you can use your fingers to isolate or manipulate the error. For example, you can uh, show the missing articles. For example, it was beautiful day. And you say, it was beautiful day. So what about this letter? What about this part of the sentence? And then they say article, at. It was a beautiful day. Um, you can show mouse shape for sound problems. For example, the sound w or th, so you can use your mouse to uh, speculate with such things. Gestures. Um, I guess all teachers have a lot. I, for example, I have this, I gesture a lot. It's probably some of my non-existent Italian roots. Um, so I show like the past, or you can show like the word order. Here to use um, your fingers intonation going up or down i sometimes show like the form of the verb like three like you need to use third form or second form of the verb um i guess you all have your own uh, gestures that your students already catch in a moment and correct themselves then you can indicate that there is a problem so this is again about some gestures uh, it can be facial expression, um, some question or like intonation. You can repeat the question. So you can just somehow indicate there is a problem and your students probably know already uh, what's that and that they need to correct themselves. Concept questions. For example, your students say, how much people is there? And you can say, can you count people? And again, they already can correct themselves. You can repeat up to an error. Let's say your students say, last night I meet with my friend. You say, last night you and your student finish the sentence, but this time correct. You can repeat problem word with a question intonation. For example, your students say, 
uh, a lot of women's and you say women's and then they again repeat the sentence and saying it correct. You can draw a timeline, perfect for tenses, showing what happens, uh, past, future, present, continuous, perfect. Uh, you can even show some um, other structures. For example, yesterday I showed on the timeline, I showed my students the difference between used to, get used to, be used to. Um, it worked pretty well too. You can give another example of a structure pattern. For example, your students say, I like eat pasta. And you say, okay. Uh, we say, I like drinking coffee. I like meeting with my friends. I like swimming in the sea. And this make your students uh, correct themselves saying, I like eating pasta. You can react to students' meaning. Um, for instance, your students say, last weekend I visited your grandmother and, you could, and I would say my grandmother in Cherkasi. How is she going? I haven't seen her for some time. Or my favorite, uh, when I ask them, how was your weekend? They say, well, I went to the cinema with your boyfriend. They're like, what? <laughs> my boyfriend? Really? Um, where I was at that moment. So it all can be about um, some funny moments, but these things uh, students remember pretty well then after. That goes a lot with and works very well with uh, pronouns. And you can use reformulation here. For example, your students say, I go to the sea yesterday. And you can say, so you went to the sea yesterday. How nice. That's so well. The weather was pretty fine. So probably I'll do that next weekend too. Um, now, these are all are basically instant correction techniques. Um, so here you have to be attentive and focus mostly on the language that you are practicing and not to get involved with other language because, uh, well, it can go far and deep and it will um, affect the fluency task that you are having. Speaking about uh, delayed error correction, uh, we can add here, noting down the errors and then putting them on board. Uh, or it can be at the end of the lesson, at the end of the activity, so different. You can do the same, uh, noting the errors and then using them for grammar auction, Kahoot, gallery walk, any other quiz game you have to uh, work out these errors. Now, um, at least some of these techniques, I'm pretty sure I bet you've used in your lessons, both offline and online. So now let's see which ones we can use during which form uh, of lesson, online or offline. And I will need your involvement here a bit. I'm going to name a technique and I want you to send a quick reaction. Let's say it will be uh, this um, party reaction if we speak about offline. Um, a thumb up for online and a heart if you can use it everywhere in any type of lesson, okay? Um, so here you will see them always on top. Um, so you can uh, see what reaction to send to me. Okay, we will start with performance feedback. Uh, giving praise in words like good job, well done. Mm hmm. Okay. Yes. So you can use it everywhere. Speaking offline, online, it doesn't matter. You can you give praise to your students at any lesson. Moving to the next practice, next stage or next task. Mm hmm. Yes. Also, it works for both. Given stickers or candies. Mm hmm. Yes, it's something physical, so you can do that offline. Um, and though it's impossible with candies, but you can use some online stickers, you can use some reactions, uh, or there is this new feature on Zoom like filters, which frankly speaking, I'm not sure yet how can we use. If you have any ideas, you can text it in the chat if you have tried that. Um, but it looks very interesting and a bit, I guess, Promising. Um, I've got something here. 
Uh, my students has a different look every time. Okay, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stickers, stickers on Telegram. Yeah, so we have the sticker pack on Telegram in by Green Forest, so you can uh, send it. It's uh, fun and quite cool. Uh, and clapping. If you applause to your students or they applause to each other, where can you do that? Online, offline? Yeah, everywhere. So it doesn't matter. Offline, online. Um, he was a pirate last. Okay. Well, <laughs> now content feedback. Um, open class asking the group together to answer. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do that in both lessons. Uh, nominating individual students to answer. Mm -hmm. uh, peer or group checking. Okay, yeah, so uh, it's uh, maybe not that uh, convenient to do online, but still it's possible. If you have time, so it's good. Re okay, hmm. <laughs> I'll start. Uh, revealing answers on handouts on board, on screen. You did it offline. If you have something to give to your students, some board with markers, so it will be um, offline. Uh, so we can reveal the answers on screen too. And here you can do it not just showing share by sharing your screen or board, you can do it even with paper so you can just write something on paper and show it I guess it will add up to some fun. Here I have another um, screenshot picture from uh, the Internet where students showing thank you notes to their teacher that's like my wish to you for your students to reveal their attitude to your lessons this way. Uh, now, if we have students nominating other students, when can we do that? Where? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Listening to recordings with the answer. Mm -hmm. Voting. Yes. And voting, you can do either like raise your hand, or send a reaction, great. Or um, uh, online, it can be also uh, using the poll in Zoom, like I did at the very beginning. So you can prepare it beforehand and then have it during the lesson. Yeah, uh, offline, you have your own, um, I don't know, ways to do that. It can be like writing on papers or just showing things. Okay, language, checking the answers. So here, basically, most of the things we can do um, in both lessons, like paired group checking, uh, using check button on the platform, writing answers. If we speak about the board, uh, you can do that offline. Um, though you can show answers on screen, which can be both online and offline. Mm -hmm. Nominating students students nominating each other, listening to the recording, uh, handouts with the answers. Mm -hmm. Yes, getting one student to read the answers. It also can be everywhere. Um, as for online, we can add up here quick reactions. So when like the student answers, you can send a quick reaction to show that that was great, that was interesting. Or they can, with the reaction they show, like, did you like it? They can show, uh, send you yes or no. Uh, was it interesting? They can show, um, I don't know, the same yes or no. So like for quick, quick things, you can use that. Okay, well, I found like here like singing, tam -ta -da -dam. <laughs> that's a nice idea too. Uh, all right, and error correction. Uh, referring to a correct model. Both, yes. State the problem area. Mm -hmm. The same, both. Basically, everything that goes with speaking, you can do in any class. Uh, fingers, the same, you can show. As soon as people can see you, you can you can show things. Uh, show mouse shape for sound problems. Mm -hmm. Both gestures. 
the same, indicate there is a problem, some facial expression, gestures, questions, mm -hmm. um, concept questions, that's about speaking, so the same for both, uh, repeat up to an error, both, mm -hmm. draw a timeline, Yes, yes, you can draw a timeline on the board in your classroom. If it's offline lesson, you can use the board on Zoom and draw timelines there. And which is actually sometimes even very uh, good way to draw a timeline because then you make screenshot and send it to Telegram so everyone has it, like instead of making photos of the screen of computer. Um, next one is given another example of a structure pattern. Both. Mm -hmm. uh, look at me. Okay, look at me to indicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, react to students' meaning. That's about speaking. So both. Like when you say, I visited your grammar, my grammar. Um, reformulation. Like so, you went to the sea. So for both lessons. Um, noting down errors. While students are doing fluency activity, yeah, you can note down uh, errors, use them uh, after on board or using grammar, uh, auction, Kahoot. Uh. Also, gallery walk, you would use only for offline. So it would be, it's impossible to make them walk around the room. Um, so it will work only for offline. Um, now, I would like here to add up a couple of things that you can use for online lessons. Um, so if gallery walk, you can use only for offline. Uh, to offline only, you can also adapt pointing at problem places while uh, students are doing a writing activity. So you go, you monitor, and you can just point out, like, read the sentence again. Are you sure uh, it's the right tense or are you sure it's the right form? So you can do that while you are in a classroom. For online, you can uh, tag the errors to students in direct messages. So if they are doing some fluency activity and they are like discussing something and you hear some mistakes. So instead of interrupting them, because online it can be also not always like they have some time issues sometimes like you start speaking and they don't hear you because they are speaking so it's very convenient here you just type the error in direct message to your students and it doesn't stop them from talking so they see they correct themselves and they keep doing the activity uh, again you can send reactions here uh, and uh, i like also using annotate bar uh, that's usually when you're sharing the screen, so you can draw over whatever you're showing, um, so it's uh, useful and sometimes it also can be pretty fun. So, uh, what I wanted to say, feedback is one of the best ways to help your students learn. These are just uh, a few ideas, tips and strategies for giving effective feedback and growing great learners in your classroom. So I hope it was useful for you. Uh, have some fun using them. And thank you very much for your attention and for your participation. You're great. And I'll be happy to answer any questions if you have any. Okay, I'll come here. Okay, thank you very much. Great, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> Great. Thank you, thank you very much. I'm very happy it's useful um, and interesting to you. So I guess uh, if you, I see people don't really have questions. Uh, anyway, you can find me in some chats if you have any questions and always can text me. Thank you again very much for participation, for coming, for 
uh, your work today to um, have a great day, great weekend, great students, enjoy it very much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye, everyone.